So at 4.20, they have entire packages at every single seat for everyone to light up. Man, big pops what's going on everybody who's watching behind the scenes over here we're hanging out here on the patio for a second you might notice something different we've got a whole crowd of people andrew from the crowd camp everybody wave to this camera over here okay so the shtick is basically here in uh, about two minutes the intro will start then uh, the show will start i got a little rundown for y'all what's happening there's you've seen some gift bags and some joints please follow the instructions not that particularly hard also, there's all sorts of snacks and bevies and stuff inside, so I appreciate y'all helping yourself to that. Yeah. There's some reserved seating up front, otherwise there's a few seats left over here. Um, with that, I appreciate y'all being here. Looking forward to this. So with that, we're just gonna let the uh, kind of camera run for a second while Andrew just does it, just to give you guys the heads up. But yes, the joints are to be lit at 420. The best way to do those, because they're a little bit of a pain, peel just the little top part off, right? It's a little bit picky, peel it off, bite that little top part, and then give it a little, just a little pop to pop the top, or you guys get squeeze really hard. Yeah, not that hard, Ken. Just, just like a little. <laughs> and then you pop right over. Uh, and then, yeah, please join us to Life with 420. And also, at the end of the show, there's a little shtick at the end of the show that I'd like y'all to participate in as well, too. If that's cool, Papa, appreciate you being up here, man. You know, I always participate in pre show. Hey. Hey. All right. <laughs> it looked like Instagram was down earlier, so at least take the pictures and post them later, if nothing else. Otherwise, the location is Studio 710. You can tag Expert Joints, Mike Rita, also Expert Joints Live is the hashtag as well too. And with that, uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. I appreciate everybody who's here. Thank you very much. And with that, in like a couple of seconds, Andrew's gonna run the intro and then tell me when we're on because I don't have a monitor here today. Cool? Stone bastard. <laughs> That's right, and if it's uh, your 420, please join us for ours. If it's not your 420, that's okay. Join us anyway. We're out here doing it for the 180th time, episode 180. And in the right. It's also the season four finale as well, too. So thank you all for being here today. I appreciate that. A lot of people came out to be part of this year. Let me do a little housekeeping first before we roll on with the show. Uh, last week, me and DJ Slippy did episode 47 of uh, Fridays over there featuring Opus 420. You can check the replay over on Mixcloud and Twitter and Periscope and all that. Appreciate everybody who's here doing that. Make sure you watch those. Also, check it out on High Times TV, tv.hightimes.com. You can check them out as well too. And on the HTTV app. Appreciate you. Come on in. You guys <laughs> And then, um, yeah, uh, uh, last week's show was all there with all the series. It's a good thing. Uh, please be able to support that. Check those out. Appreciate it there. What else? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, if you don't want to miss what's going on in the YouTube, of course, please hit the uh, subscribe button down here and give us a thumbs up as well, too. And there's a graphic. Andrew's running over here. Uh, um, and uh, let me see what else. Oh, yeah, we're on the patio in a complete 180. We're outside with um, a whole bunch of friends for a special episode. And I say, who's we? Well, Whoa! these guys. Freddie, being wrong, being wrong. Uh, so yes, they're out here getting high, we're all getting high. You can notice everybody out here's got a, a Fukushima pre-roll as well too here. Right, pretty good, right? right. So you know, y'all can get fooked.ca if you if you want. Also, this makes it. This was joint 192, and there's like 50 of you here with all joints. So that's like joint 242 for the season. So that's pretty good. Um, that's probably do more later. Uh, let me see what else. Um, at this rate, I bet you we'll probably hit 300 before the show's over, let's face it. But I appreciate everybody who came out here. A lot of folks made it, including our guest today, the funniest comic in cannabis by the name of Mike Rita. Make a little noise for Mike Rita. You'll, you'll make more noise afterwards. It's actually quite funny if you don't know the act. I've seen it, it's great. We also have to thank Crop King Seeds for having us here. Uh, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be putting on this event and Mike wouldn't be here. So let's check out CropKingScenes.com, support them, appreciate that. And uh, with that, if I could get a, uh, let me see, uh, check, check, check. Okay, great, yeah. 
Well, I do. Now this part, off the script, I really got to thank everybody who's here in the crowd. You've played a big part in some way or another, or you're here with someone who did in the last season and previous seasons, so I appreciate being here. Thanks for coming, joining us to token up and tune in, not only on the Cannabis Belt and Pod TV, the Cannabis Life Network, here for Joyce.com, but on the rooftop here at Studio 7 pat Patio, so give me a round of applause for yourself, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. seen our guest perform, you're in for a treat, pretty much, basically, rather than doing the usual talk show format show, I'm tired of that, we've done that a million times, well, 180 times, actually, and then some, truth be told, so that's why we're going to do this in a complete 180, all you're here to see is not to be on the show, you're here to enjoy the show, and the show that is Mike Rita, and for those of you who don't know, since winning Second City's Tim Sims Award for Best New Comic, Mike Rita has gone on to perform at countless festivals and on TV and radio across the country. He's worked with the likes of Joe Rogan, Bobby Lee, and Mike McDonald, has appeared on MTV, Much Music, CBC Radio, Sirius XM, and Just for Laughs in Montreal, and of course JFL 42 in Toronto, and even Pod TV. When not on tour at Yuck Yuck's Comedy Clubs, Mike can be found hosting the award-winning Stoner Sundays weekly at the, uh, weekly at the renowned Vapor Central in Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, it brings me great pleasure to bring you one of my absolute favorite, com favorite comics in the business. Put your hands together for Mike Rita! <laughs> Keep it going, yeah. what the fuck happened? Turn it up. <laughs> hey, what can I do with this? Can I get this shit off? This is the most stoner shit I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, yo, Craig X, take this uh, Cannabis Life Network thing out of here. I feel like some shitty news reporter. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's gonna be much harder than I ever expected. Um, Craig, what the fuck happened? Oh, give it up for Craig, everybody. Let him <laughs> Check, check. Oh, there it is. This guy, yo, he does it all. Give it up for Greg. Let him hear it. He's a host. He's a white technician. There's a guy on the roof. He's a sniper. He's going to kill us all. He starts blasting us off. This is the most Vancouver show that I could have ever done in my fucking life. Did you get, oh, you went to a comedy show? Where was it? At Yuck Yucks? No, it was on a rooftop in downtown, you know? We were smoking weed. There was a guy in a Golden State Warriors jersey in Canada. Boo! Boo! You suck! Go back to America, or at least somewhere else shittier than here. Go back to Abbotsford or some shit. No, Surrey. No, that place is nice. I can't believe you have that jersey on. I feel like there's something in like a Torontonian in me that means that I just have to like heckle you and shit like that and make fun of you and be like, oh, fucking... Warriors are not gonna win this goddamn fucking series. We can't do this. I got hired to do comedy. I'm just gonna stand here and argue with you for 10 minutes. The Warriors are not gonna take this. Canada sang the national anthem last game. We're gonna win this shit. We're really lucky to live in Canada. Like, look what we're doing right now. Do you understand how amazingly free this is? Like, what, like, that, that, like we, we, okay. The funny thing is, whether or not it was legal, we'd still be doing this. <laughs> because this is like the one group of people who don't give a shit if it's legal or not. We're all like, yeah, we'd be doing this anyway. This is what we do. We smoke weed. And this is... But people around the world, like, they don't understand. Like, they, they're going to come to Canada to smoke weed, and Vancouver's going to be one of those spots, and they're never going to want to go anywhere else. I want you guys to know, I'm from Toronto, born and raised, and Vancouver is the best city in the country. I'll yeah. fuck you guys win. You win. But it comes with like a cost, and you guys also have the most fucked up crackheads in the country too, so it's like a weird trade-off, you know? I love this city too, because uh, every time you fly in, like, I flew in, and I was smoking weed at the airport, and the guy who picked me up, I was like, can I smoke? He's like, obviously, you're in Vancouver. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I just got in the car, I was like, yeah, that's alright, I guess, but Vancouver's nice, you know, like, like, living in Canada is nice. We're really lucky right now, like, do you guys even care that it's legal? Did it even change anybody's life here? No. Of course not. Isn't that, you guys ever have people ask you, hey man, weed's legal in Canada, is it crazy now? You're like, no, nothing. It's even worse than it was before. So, yeah. <laughs> Somehow it's worse than it was before they made it legal. There's more rules, people give a shit. You know, it's funny because they didn't legalize it for us. We, they don't have to legalize it for us. We already smoked weed. They legalized it for old people. You know, think about that. Old people sitting in their house like, now we can finally do it, Robert. <laughs> we can order it online. Look at that. They have a push. My son says, that's good. <laughs> you know? Like, has anybody... I've tried legal weed. I've even gone as far as to buy legal weed. Has anybody bought legal weed yet here? Yeah. 
guys, it's okay, you don't have to be. And I love how angry, no, God, no. What the fuck? Only once. I like, we all have to say no to because some of our dealers are sitting in the audience right now. Like, oh, no, I never bought it. Yeah, we're so fucking lucky, man. Like, honestly, like, I'm getting high on stage right now. Like, like I'm from Ontario, too, which was fucked up. Did you guys get weed stores right away, or did you guys have to order online, too? Online. Online? You guys have weed stores yet? Is there a BC weed stores? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, this guy did the funniest face. He's like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that was the face you gave me. Like, I kind of think, but who gives a fuck? <laughs> That's my favorite, man. Everyone in this audience has real, like, honestly, I do comedy normally for normal audiences, and when you do a whole high audience, you get high audience reactions, you know? <laughs> like, for real, normally there would never be that. Is that a yeah or no? <laughs> like, we didn't get stores. Do you guys remember, like, we didn't get stores, and neither did you guys, so people had to order online. And you guys, I don't know, did, like, Canada Post went on strike, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but, like, people who were waiting three to five days for their weed, had to wait like two, three weeks, some of them. Do you remember that? And people were complaining all over the country. And only in Canada. You know how spoiled you are to have to complain about weed? And it make like front page news and shit like that. Like people standing there like, where's the cannabis, you know? <laughs> like you understand how spoiled we are? I remember seeing the news, people being like, I've been waiting two to three weeks for my goddamn cannabis. People on the news and the news reporter there was like, yes, sir, that's unbelievable. Yeah, you know, like, like the rest of the world is falling. You don't just end up crazy if you aren't spoiled. Like the rest of the world is falling apart. America never been more politically divided. Europe, their dollars fuck. Asia is Asia. Who knows what the fuck is happening in Asia, you know? And then the rest of the world is like Canada. What's your biggest problem? Well, we're like, we have to wait two weeks for a fucking weed over here. For God's sake. Only, only, only people who have never smoked weed in their lives would think three to five days is a good amount to wait for weed. You imagine you went to your dealer's house. Hey, here's fifty. Can I get a quarter? Yeah, I'll see you on Monday. Why? I need it now. No, three to five days. Okay, I'll come pick it up on Saturday. No, it's not a real day. <laughs> Saturday, Sunday aren't real, but you gotta come Monday. Three to five days for weed. Who? Who's, who's sitting there going, all right, here we go, we're gonna get high. On Tuesday, fuck, let's go. Just wait, it'll be. <laughs> weed is one of those things that I start buying more weed when I get down to my last half ounce. Like when you're like, I only have a day and a half's worth of weed. I should pick up more right now just to be safe. There could be a tidal wave tomorrow and I won't be able to get to my dealer's house. What's the most amount of weed you've ever read up on? Like you ever have like an ounce, but you know you're going out for the weekend, you're like, I might need a whole nother ounce, who knows? <laughs> do you guys remember when you were younger and a 20 sack was enough to get you so high that that was your day? It was like a do weekend. Remember, do you remember being in high school and someone showing up with a 20 sack and you being like, yo, fuck, third and fourth period, let's get the fuck out of here, y'all. Yo. We have a 20 sack. You, understand that? you ever just smoke a 20 sack like that and you're like, we need another ounce right now, fuck, you know, that's not enough. Like a 20 sack, I can't remember when a 20 sack was enough. Do you guys ever sit there and think about how much weed you smoked in, mo in money, and then you're like, no, let's not think about that ever again. <laughs> you ever look at a house and you're like, I've had that house weed, you know? <laughs> it's true, it's a weird, unnerving thought. You ever look at like a Ferrari? Of course you do, because you live in Vancouver. <laughs> look at your phone right now. <laughs> Man, smoking weed is special though. We got to live in the amazing time that is the, like the split between it being illegal for all these years, and now for the rest of our lives it'll be legal. You understand that? We all got to enjoy that. Like, that might have, it's not even cool to us now. Because we don't even give a shit about it now. Right now we're all rebellious, like, yeah, that shit, fuck you. Support your local dealer, bro, you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. But in like 50, 60 years, our grand, our kids aren't even gonna like weed. It's gonna be our grandkids that love weed. Our kids are gonna look at weed weird, like, ew, smoke weed, why am I? My mom and dad? Oh, my God. They're not gonna like it, they're gonna think it's weird. <laughs> our grandkids are the one who are gonna like it because they're gonna trip out. Our grandkids are gonna go to school, and we're probably, like, imagine like 50, 60 years from now when you're in your 70s and 80s, and you're getting older. Your grandkids are gonna read about our times in their history book. You understand? Their history books in school are gonna have this time, and they're gonna come home and be like, Grandpa. I read in my history book that you were alive during marijuana prohibition. You were gonna be 80 or shit and be angry and be like, you're damn right I was, you little fuck. In my day, we lost a lot of men in the drug war. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're not 
like, crap, I read in my books that drug dealers had knives and guns. Some of them had planes or get angry and be like, planes? My drug dealer didn't even have a cell phone all the time. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are they teaching you in that book? You know, you're gonna flip through. Let me teach you a little thing or two. Sit the fuck down. You know what a half quarter is? No, God damn it. Liberal spooks and shit. You were gonna just angry. You don't even get mad anymore. You know when you get old, you just get random and you just get angry. You're a goddamn conservative. <laughs> You're gonna try rolling a joint and their grandkids aren't even gonna get it. Grandpa, why are you rolling a joint? You can just take one of these tablets. Tablets, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> My dad, you rolled it in a zig zag. <laughs> because we're so old, we have to do old people live shit. I can still lick it. Your wife from another room. No, I can't. <laughs> Mark her. We live in an incredible weed culture, man. I fucking love it. I love that we get to be these people, man. Yeah, school, we get to be the generation. Hippies thought they had it. They were like, dude, smoke pot, freedom, fuck, shut the fuck up, legalize it, let's get some shit done. That was our generation. We smoked so much weed that the government had to give it to us. Do you understand that? Do you understand that mathematically it would have been bad business to not give us legal weed? And my favorite thing is now that they, they like, lately there's been a lot of articles coming out like, Canada had a chance to corner the market on pot, and they dropped the ball. I love these articles because it's good. It puts pressures on our politicians. Because they, did you like, they're like, yeah, every, every province is, is saying that they're losing money with legal weed, which always makes me laugh. Because of course you are. Your product is shit, it's more expensive, and it's harder to get. Yeah. And they're still like, well, but why are we losing money? <laughs> it's garbage, right? That, that's what our number one complaint is, dry and shit, okay. Our prices are more expensive than the streets, okay, yeah, okay. And it's hard to get to. <laughs> I don't understand why we're losing millions of dollars a month for crazy. I thought people wanted weed. <laughs> I want good weed at a good price at their friend's basement. Yeah. Free the weed! Free the weed! The weed is free. We gotta free the minds, bro. These people's minds are what's fucking stuck. You ever, like, politicians don't even get it. Like, they, you, you can talk to them about weed and be like, God, <laughs> <laughs> the problem is though, have you ever seen we politicians? They're even worse. You ever like like you ever see like sort of like politicians, like the guys who are unelected, they always come up and like do speeches. They're always like, yeah, dude, you know, we need to uh, get out there and uh, spread the word of cannabis to our constituents. <laughs> we don't need that. We know we need we need like a straight cut guy. So fucking like we're so good at speaking political shit, but also have to, like we need okay. You know what we need? We need politicians to just come out to like one of those little like uh, platform things and just do a speech and at the end of the speech just pull out a joint and be like, that was a lot of work, I'd like to relax now. <laughs> make headline news, politician smokes weed. Well, I want Justin Trudeau to do it. Just to be like, you guys are always making fun of my stutter, well it's because I'm high all the time. <laughs> I love that we have that in our Do you guys think we'll see a time where politicians smoke weed on TV and do photo ops smoking weed? Uh, the economic situation. <laughs> yeah, the Ukrainian guy who won. He, did he just like win full of president too? Yeah, yeah. that guy is the man. <laughs> That's like this whole country is a joke, but this is not a joke anymore to me. And that country's like, wow, sad. Right. This guy did it. This guy did it. Put me over, man. <laughs> Where you are, that's what you're gonna write on Facebook. Justin Trudeau, he's letting in Muslims. <laughs> These are people who live in places that don't even have black people and they're worried about Muslims for fuck's sake. Get it together, you fucks. <laughs> Man, our, we live in a funny country. Like, I, like if, even in this like little area, make some noise if you had immigrant parents. I mean, you make some noise if you had immigrant parents. I, mean, yeah, I had immigrant parents too. What kind of immigrant parents do we got here? Make some noise. Like here. Colombian. Colombian, hardcore, bro. Mexican. Mexican. Chinese. <laughs> you're so funny. You're like Chinese Vancouver. Hey, fuck, bro, you got me. <laughs> Awesome. Pork chops, bro. Pork chops. Pork chops? You Portuguese? Yeah. yeah, bro. How funny is that? Yeah, I'm from the 6 too, man. This guy looks like he's just coming from the beach or some <laughs> shit like that. Okay, I'm wearing the colors, we bro.
English. English is the funniest immigrant because not real immigrants. You know what I mean? Like you never hear of like, a, yeah, my father, he had a hard time coming here. He had a hard time finding a managerial position in the NFL. Like, you know? Of course he did. Anybody who's, man, a British guy shows up for a labor position, they're like, buddy, you got an accent. You're the manager now. Fuck. Here you guys rips off the name tag. Okay. Yeah. And you're from Toronto too? Yeah. And you, what do you do in Vancouver? What are you, why are you even asking that question? The like weather, man. You said I came from the beach. Because <laughs> everybody else looks like they're really big potheads, but you're like, hey, if you want a little chachi, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Honestly, man, growing up with weed, you, you like, weed isn't a gateway drug, but it's definitely a gateway into drug culture. You understand what I mean? Like, just because I smoke weed, I somehow I stumble across coke. Dude, it's so funny. You really do have that look, where it's like, at the end of the night, you're the guy's like, hey, you think anybody's got a little cha-cha? That's my favorite. Other drugs. <laughs> He's never done a psychedelic. Dude, okay, I want you guys to know, I've been doing comedy for over 10 years. I don't think I've ever had not almost the entire audience not clap for that. But there's always a bunch of people like, of course I've never tried acid. I'm not a fucking maniac. <laughs> Everybody was like, dude, man, I think I tried like last week. <laughs> Try. <laughs> Mushrooms and acid are fun, aren't they? Because you don't know what the fuck you're waiting for. Sometimes you do a half a tab and you don't feel nothing. Sometimes you do a half a tab and you're like, boom! You know? You okay, dude? I don't know. Good. I love, I love, I love mushrooms, but I like acid more. Mushrooms gives me anxiety sometimes. Like sometimes mushrooms just takes too long to peak. Do you get what I mean? Like you're, there's like a two hour period before you get really high where you're, and I, don't, I never do like two grams of mushrooms. I always do like five, six grams. <laughs> if you're gonna do mushrooms, do mushrooms. <laughs> like, you know, you don't get on a motorcycle and do 15 like, <laughs> I'm on a motorcycle. Yeah, I guess, technically. <laughs> but are you, are you riding a motorcycle? No, you get on a motorcycle, you hit the highway, <laughs> you know? That's so when I do mushrooms, that's what I wanna do. I wanna do six grams and, and, and be mad at myself for doing it. And for, for, this is too much, why did you do that? And then a half an hour in, be like, oh, you're stuck now. And then two hours in, like, <laughs> Oh, you guys ever feel the wind? <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about mushrooms and acid is how close you can get to nature just naturally. You ever just stand on acid, look at a tree, and you're like, this thing's alive right now. <laughs> you can hear me or no tree? <laughs> you ever try to talk to your dog or your cat when you're really high? <laughs> you ever just make eye contact with them like, hey, you can hear me right now or no? And they look at you and you're like, oh! <laughs> he looked! I swear in my head I was thinking about it. <laughs> I love when you're high like that and you can you made yourself wet or like most random situations. <laughs> you talking into a microphone. This is like a weed convention, you know? This is like some weird weed convention that I've stumbled onto. Hey, you guys like mush? What's your favorite strain? Mm -hmm. UK cheese? Uh -huh. <laughs> I actually love cheeses. And I love cheeses <laughs> I actually love, 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 love cheeses. What's your favorite strains? I, I mean, we're going to have a lot of weird answers here, but... Rockstar Kush. Rockstar Kush? Yes, you and that guy. How did you guys come... This guy said the exact same strain the same time you said it. It actually looked creepy from my eyes. Because this guy went, you know, like, rock star Kush. But you in the back were going, rock star Kush. And I was like, that's not your voice. I don't know, fuck. He's a ventriloquist. Yeah, he's using you. Does that mean he has his hand up your what, bro? <laughs> ventriloquist is Man, I was talking about immigrant parents. What you guys say? You smoked weed with your parents around? Like you smoked weed when you still live no. back at home with your parents? Not around. No? No. See, I started smoking weed when I was 15 years old. <laughs> Clive, do we have teenage pot users in here? Make some noise if you use weed as a teenager. Let me get you right now. <laughs> like, I don't even condone that much, but even like now, I'm like, no, those were the best years, though, man. Those are the best years if you smoking weed. Because every joint is like a paranoid filled joint. Do you guys remember how nervous you got? Preteens? Did you say preteen? Shut up! Guys, that's Whoa. too young. Imagine an 11 and 12 year old stumble in here right now high as fuck. We'd be like, get out of here. You're gonna get us in trouble. Dude, we're part of the culture. Get the fuck out of here. Here's 10 bucks. What are McDonald's? It's dollar drink things. Great teens. You guys are fucked. Like grade 7 and 8. You're like that weed smoking grandma though, so it all explains everything. I'm a Canadian. But I don't like Grandpa when he's not high on three or four dabs. <laughs> We're gonna be so old we won't even be able to dab it because it shakes too much. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, imagine how hard we're gonna cough. Like, you ever remember your grandfather's cough? That 
<laughs> Do you remember that? Every grandfather or uncle has that cough. This is like a horn. <gasps> Grandpa, are you okay? <laughs> Why do you cough like that? <laughs> I'm an immigrant. We all cough like that. <laughs> Those boats and planes over. See, I had immigrant parents and I smoked tons of weed. And, and the problem is that, like, we're going to be much different parents than our immigrant parents. I mean, we used to have to lie to our parents. Like, this guy just did it. Good, you're the man. He gave me the, like, microphone up. He's like, put the microphone up. Trust the worst. <laughs> Doesn't that one just make you sad? Yeah. I honestly I honestly just got sad when I heard that. I was like, yo, that's a bad one. Give the good one, Andrew. Give the round of applause. Andrew, give me a good one, he says. Give me a round of applause. Oh. Yo, honestly, just start using that after jokes that don't sound that good. <laughs> what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, man! When I started coming up, he said, you know, that's the worst thing a room full of potheads asking, what, what am I just talking about? I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you were talking about, remember when you were in <laughs> Have you ever had that moment? Like, honestly, you ever just sit getting high with your friends and something happens on, like, just say on TV, you're like, whoa! And you're like, okay, what are we talking about? And your friend's like, what? <laughs> you ever just sit there and try your hardest? You just, you make it right to the edge of the thought. You're like, it's right here. I just can't see it for some reason. I love that pothead part of your brain. You ever roll a joint, put it down, go to the washroom, come back, and it's not there anymore? <laughs> and you're like, oh, I know for sure I fucked this up somewhere. <laughs> Do you even have a subconscious feeling like I put it somewhere so that it wouldn't get wet and now it's gone forever? <laughs> have you ever lost a joint completely and never found it ever again? Hey, I hope when you die you get those back. <laughs> you show up in heaven and God's like, yo, you probably want to smoke. No, you're like, well, here's 10 that you lost over your life. Oh! <laughs> Okay, so, we gotta recap. Smoke weed, come home to the basement. She's chilling out. My sister tells her what the fuck is going on. She's not chill anymore. So I want you to know, for months I had come home high out of my mind, and my mom didn't know. And on this day she had found out, and it was one of my favorite interactions with my mom. My mom's an old little Portuguese lady. When I opened the door, it was so great. I just remember opening the door and going, hi. And she comes out of nowhere and just goes, hi. Not say hi to me because you high enough for everyone. <laughs> hey man, I'm telling you, even as an adult, I'm, in my head I'm still like, yo, that's a pretty good one. That's pretty good. You have to understand, man, that lady was stewing in that shit for hours. And she, you know, like, when he come home, I'm gonna give it to him. She did. As soon as I got home, it was so fucking funny. Even to this day, I laugh about that shit. Because as soon as I, like, she said it to me, and I got shocked. She walked right up to me and she goes, let me see your eyes. And I opened my eyes like this. And she goes, close them. You look like a crackhead. And I was like, I do look like a crackhead right now. I got to love. She goes, let me see your eyes. Let me see your eyes. And she's staring into my eyes. She goes, your eyes are red. Your eyes are red like the devil. Never come home like this because I don't like it. And God, God do not like it. And I was so fucking high that I just went, what are you talking about, man? God likes it. And she went, what? And I remember just being like, fuck, now I got to go all in with this shit. And then she just goes, what are you talking about? The drugs ruin your brain. And I go, no, listen, man. I do drugs are ruining my brain. God likes weed. And she goes, what are you talking about? I go, man, God made plants. And she goes, yeah. I go, weed is a plant. She goes, yeah. I go, that means God made weed. And she goes, yeah, of course. No, 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 no. No, you're tricking me. And I go, I'm not tricking you, man. Religion tricked you. And she went, what? And I went, nothing. I gotta get the fuck out of here. I'm in too deep now. And I remember having crazy arguments like that for months on end, man. It was wild, man. It was wild. And none of us will have to experience that with our kids. Like, just get angry at them, but like in modern, like, ways. Like, you ever hear of people, like, catching their kids smoking, so they made them smoke the whole pack? Just shit like that. Oh, you're smoking weed with your friends? Well, I'm gonna give you two dabs. You're gonna like it after that? I don't fucking think so. What's a dab? Sit the fuck down. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a dab and I'm gonna order a pizza at the same time. If you can uh, stay awake long enough, you can have some pizza and you'll be high. What's that? <laughs> Imagine giving your kid a dab and not warning them that they're gonna get all kinds of fucked up. <laughs> not even warning them about that cough. Because the first cough, like, your first dab is a trick. Because the inhale is so nice, isn't it? You ever remember the first time you inhale a dab and it's it nice. <laughs> That first dab to your lungs is like a fucking Mike Tyson. 
you guys remember when you first learned how to cough? At first, when you first start smoking weed, you don't know how to cough. You learn how to cough through smoking weed for so fucking long. Like when you first start smoking weed, your coughs are so bad. Like there's like three levels to this shit. Remember when you, when you first start learning how to smoke weed, you cough, but it's small coughs. Like <clears throat> you don't even have to step away from the session. You're good. But then there's the second one where you got to pass the joint right away. <laughs> You ever step away and you puke just a little bit? You know what I mean from the coughing? It's not even real puke, it's coughing puke. We're like, and then phlegm just goes, and it just makes like a, and nobody hears it, so you're like, yo, I'm next in line, what the fuck? But then there's the third level, man. There's the level of coughing that hurts your eyes, it hurts your ears, your temple, and your fucking head feels like it's gonna come. And it always happens from a bong hit mostly, man. You know the bong hit cough? It's the one that hits you before you even can exhale, you know? You ever have people who don't even get their lips away from the bong in time? Everyone's been there, you've all seen it. That's the third level of cover. They're like, yeah, I got this. Man, the fucking bowl goes flying. There's wet weed all over the house. And it's funny to everybody except whose house it is. That person was always like, my fucking carpet. <laughs> Oh my god, that shit was so funny, man. When you were a teenager, that shit used to happen all the time. Do you guys remember your first hotbox? Your first hotbox is the same thing. It's fun for everybody except whoever's house it is. Whoever's house it is can't stop putting towels under the door, can't stop turning on the fans, spraying for breeze and shit. These amazing guidelines, we have this amazing system in place. The government's like, nah, we'll just do it our way, and now they're learning the hard way that pilots don't give a fuck about politics. And we don't give a fuck about legislation unless it's legislation that's fair for everybody. Like, that's the thing. They thought they were going to make this legislation and all of us are going to be like, finally, a solution. <laughs> but all of us are smart enough to be like, no, wait, that's a trick. We know scams. I've been selling weed for 14 years. I know what a scam looks like and this is for sure underweight. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, look at our half quarter. You're like, that's a 20 sack on the street, you know? Get away from me, you creep. <laughs> Have you ever seen like the, like the Bruce Lins of the world? Like the tweed guys talk about weed? They're such evil villains. <laughs> Cannabis in the black market, it's full of fentanyl. <laughs> They like smoking street weed, you're gonna be addicted to fentanyl. <laughs> All of us are high out of our minds on fentanyl, like, what? <laughs> Can you imagine picking up weed and it was laced with fentanyl? And it was at a good price, that's a good deal. <laughs> drugs are drugs, baby. That was such a funny thing when we were younger. Laced weed. Watch out, you get laced weed. I'm gonna tell you what 99% of laced weed is. It's just a bad trip on weed. Someone's just getting paranoid out of their mind. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. There's gonna be a weird connection to people having like mental breakdowns and weed, because I've seen it. And I know it sounds crazy, but like all of us can handle our weed like motherfuckers, but some people just can't. Some people just smoke a joint and it's not like, like for us, we smoke generally, yay. Some people smoke a joint and you, you can just see it go away in their eyes. They're just like, oh. <laughs> You okay? Hey, uh, uh. <laughs> And then when you leave the party, they're like, dude, man, what the fuck was happening in there? And you're like, why? Everything was chill. They're like, yeah, dude, I don't know. I don't know, I was pretty scared. <laughs> I've, had, I've seen people have full breakdowns where they lose character. They're not even themselves anymore. I've had a friend of mine one time, Bo Tang. I swear to God, this guy's for real. A guy named Kevin Bo Tang. We spoke to join with him. And he started crying and then he started praying. And we're like, why are you crying, Kevin? He's like, I'm too high, man. My mom's gonna know, man. And I remember being like, yo, is this sweet lace? This is it. This is sick. <laughs> wow. Like, I mean, honestly, wouldn't it be sick if once a year one joint was laced and they don't tell you with what and you're just smoking you're like, Ah, oh, this is the one! Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking sick. Oh man, I think I got the acid one. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'll perform it to the sunset. <laughs> All of the pilots are like, well, we gotta walk in the next 10 minutes or our feet are gonna fall asleep. <laughs> so you got nine laps, you're gonna Nine? Yeah. I'm gonna take the full 10, I'm gonna go full. Give it up for Mike Rita! Yeah! 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 Yeah!
all of us know about the benefits of CBD and all of us have been preaching it for a long time. But I didn't even learn about it until I swear to God, this was like 10 years ago, man. I was 18, 19 years old and I was uh, just learning about the world of activism and weed. And a bunch of activists in Toronto, guys named like Chris Goodwin and shit like that, they taught me about CBD and all of its benefits. <coughs> man, I'm never gonna forget this shit. I tried to bring CBD into my house when I was 18. My mother had breast cancer, and when, uh, she was going through chemotherapy. And like, I, I, I just, everybody had said, people going through chemo, man, give them CBD, give them CBD. So I ordered CBD from Vancouver, from a person who was making it out here, and I tried to bring it into my mom. And you have immigrant parents, you have Portuguese parents. Yeah. Imagine trying to bring home weed pills to your mom, okay? Look like, at this guy's face, like, no, nah, I don't think so, bro. I might as well pick up a coke addiction, bro. But I'm telling you, I brought home CBD pills to my mom, and I, my mom was going through cancer at the time, so she was already like mentally just all over the place and stressed. And I remember bringing home CBD and trying to convince my mom and going like, "Wow, these are weed pills," and her just being like, "What? What is this?" And me being like, "Weed, weed pills. This is the medicine. It's called CBD." And her being like, "This is marijuana. You want to bring home marijuana for me? What are you? What are you crazy?" And her like, "No, this is nice. You're gonna like this." She goes, "I don't want this in the house. I want you to take the drugs out of the house." And I remember like, "Man, try this. You're going through chemotherapy." This is, this is modern medicine, mommy. This is the new shit. It doesn't hurt you, and it's gonna benefit you. And she's just being like, no, no, why did, I want you to take this out of the house. Man, and I want you guys to know, like, two months almost fully went by without her ever talking to me about the CBD, without anything ever happening, and then two months, almost, she's at the end of her treatment. I get a phone call, and I'm a writer during the day, so I'm working downtown, and I'm at the CBC building, and I get a fucking call, <laughs> and my mom is on the phone, and I knew it was like two in the afternoon, so some shit was going down, because either somebody died or some fucked up shit. And I pick up and I go, hi, mommy. She goes, hello, you okay? And I go, I'm okay, are you okay? She goes, yeah, because of you. <laughs> and I go, what? And she goes, Mikey, listen, I have to talk to you. And I go, what? She goes, I try it. And I go, try what? It's been like two months. I'm not even thinking about these weed pills. And she goes, eh, I try it. I try the things. And I go, what things? And she goes, give me the one pill you give me. I like it. <laughs> and I go, you try the weed pill. And she goes, yeah, I try it. I try it. I go, man. I told you to try it only during emergencies. And she goes, I'm dying. Every day's an emergency. <laughs> and I remember laughing on the phone and having these weird tears of happiness. And I swear to God, I'm on the phone. So I, got, I need you guys to know, like, I have like a little office. And I get down and I'm talking to my mom. Like, okay, I'm in the office. Tell me, tell me what happened. And she goes, I tried. I tried Monday, I like it. I go, why did you try it on Monday? She goes, I tried because I feel dizzy. You said when the bill, when the bill is good for dizzy people. I was like, yeah, it's good for dizzy. Did you feel better? She's like, I feel much better. I feel confident. I feel nice. Well, good. And I go, so why are you calling me only on Thursday? She goes, because today I, I eat two more. And I go, so you eat three? She goes, no, I eat seven. <laughs> and I go, what? She goes, I eat one Monday, two Tuesday, two Wednesday, and I eat two today. I need more. I only have three or four left. And I go, no, man, you can't eat that much. You they're, 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 they're for like emergencies. And again, she's so funny. She goes, emergency, I'm dying. And I start laughing on the phone and go, you're not dying. Chill out. Okay, so you need more pills. And she goes, yeah. I go, I don't have weed pills. They take like a week to get here. I have to order from Vancouver. And she goes, Vancouver, that's too far. I need to like tomorrow. And I go, no, I can't get them. I have to order them. And she goes, that's crazy. You don't have something for me? And I go, no, I don't have weed pills. And she goes, you don't have nothing? And I go, what, like weed weed? And she goes, yeah, for me. And I go, you want to smoke? And she goes, no, I don't want to smoke. I'm not a crackhead like you. <laughs> I honestly remember laughing on the phone and being like, I'm not a fucking crackhead. She's like, ah, you smoke drugs and I don't know. <laughs> and I start laughing on the phone and I go, so what do you want? And she goes, I don't know. And I go, what do you want, like cookies? You want weed cookies? And I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know that I was on speaker because she goes, yeah, okay, bring me cookie. And I go, you want a cookie? And she goes, yeah. And then my dad just goes, hey man, tell him to bring two cookies. <laughs> Is that daddy? Yeah, talk to you after. <laughs> And I remember my mom that day just calling me back later that night and being like, you have to bring one for your dad, I don't know, you want to try, I don't know. <laughs> I want you guys to know, till this day, my dad still likes weed cookies. My mom's been catching weed for like three, four years, man. And, uh, man, it's been wild, it's been wild. She went through a bunch of shit in my 20s where she lost it, she got it back. We kept fighting it as a family, and I want you to know, man, it's wild, man. It's wild, because, well, my mom hates weed when she's not sick on cancer. When she's sick, when she's healthy, she's like, I don't want, I don't need it, I don't want marijuana. And my dad is still like, I'm not sick, but I give me one cookie, I don't know. <laughs> my dad asks for weed cookies like he's asking for real drugs, too. I want you guys to know, you know, like, weed cookies cost, like, pretty good money. Like, they're not expensive, but, like, a good 
delicious cookies, about three for like 15, 20 bucks. That's what I'm paying in Toronto for good cookies that I like. But I can't tell my dad that they're three for 20 bucks because I have to sell it to him. And I tell him that they're three for 10 and I take the $10 hit every fucking time. Because if I told him they were three for $20, he'd be like, three for $20? What are you crazy? This is drugs. I'm paying for drugs now. But if I tell him three for 10, he's like, three for 10, that's okay. I can pay that, no problem. <laughs> you can never tell your parents the real price. You always just kick it down a little bit. Because when I give my dad these cookies, he, 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 he takes it like real drugs. Like, he'll, like I'll meet him in Wasega, which is like a cottage like area in Ontario. <laughs> And I'll meet him there, and if he finds out that I'm, I'm free that weekend and I'm coming up, he'll call me on his cell phone, and he'll whisper the whole thing like it's still drugs. I swear to God, he'll call me like, hey, mommy say you coming up to the cottage, yeah? Be like, yeah, why? He'll be like, hey, you know why? <laughs> Bring me the cookies. <laughs> I, want, I always be like, how many you want? He goes, how many you have? <laughs> And I always go, I always lie, I'm always like, I have as many as you need. And he's like, okay. And I always think he's gonna throw me a crazy number. He's like, bring me a lot, maybe two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that's how he thinks. And, and I'm always like, you want a lot, eight, two, three? He's like, yeah, yeah, I need it for maybe like one week, okay? Bring for me, I, I want it. How much? I'm always like, $10. He's like, okay, good, good, good. I give to you when you get here. And I never accept the 10, I never even want it. I just want, when I get to the cottage, like, you know, I'll drop off my bags, see my mom, give her a hug. She'll dip, and as soon as she leaves, he'll come out of like just fucking nowhere and be like, touch my shoulder, hey, what are you doing? You here, huh? You want the cookies or what? Come <laughs> from? I'm here, I'm over here, I'm over here. One time I gave my dad the wrong cookies. I do 150 milligram cookies, like most of us probably do in the 100 somewhere. My dad does 25, 30 milligram cookies. One time I gave my dad my cookies, not on purpose, obviously, you don't do that shit on purpose. I just went to my fridge and I got a stack of cookies and I, without even reading it because it's the chocolate ones, I just gave it to him. I was like, here's your cookies. <laughs> and then, like, you know, like an hour or two goes by and I go to my fridge and I see, you know, 25 milligram cookies. I'm like, oh shit. Oh fuck. <laughs> and I kind of just, you know, I'm scrambling and I'm just thinking, oh man, maybe he didn't do them yet. And I call him and he doesn't pick up the first time. And I call him two or three times and he doesn't pick up. And I write to him, daddy, pick up. Are you okay? <laughs> And as soon as I call back, he picks up and he doesn't even say hello. He just goes, hey, Mikey, how you know I'm not okay? <laughs> and I'm on the phone, I want you to know, man, think about it, man. Imagine your dad says that to you, you're instantly like, oh my God, I fucked him up! I remember being on the phone and feeling like hot. I was nervous. I was like, oh my God, this guy's all fucked up right now. Hey, I, I swear to God, I started pacing. I'm like, hey, 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 okay, 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 okay. And I go, Daddy, you eat the cookie? He goes, yeah, I eat the cookie like always. I eat one cookie, but I'm not okay today. <laughs> I go, what are you doing right now? He goes, I'm in the basement. I go, in the basement, okay, okay. Why are you in the basement? He goes, because your mom upstairs, I don't want her to see me. I go, so what are you doing? He goes, every time she opens the door, I pretend to sleep. <laughs> and I swear out in my heart, I was like, that's pretty good, that's pretty good, okay, okay. And I go, what are you feeling? And I swear to God, my 67 year old dad goes, I'm very nervous. And I go, about what? He goes, everything. <laughs> the TV's too loud, it's not loud enough. The show is good, the show's no good. I'm hungry, I'm no hungry. I'm like, yes, you're going through the symptoms of being too high right now, man. And I go, okay, just what do you want to do? He goes, I want to relax. I go, okay. And my dad, I swear to God, man, one of the sweetest things he's ever said to me, he goes, hey, I'm going to be okay. And I go, yeah, why? He goes, I don't know, I never high like this. I'm high like you. And I go, no, you're higher. He goes, oh, oh. I can honestly, I swear to God, I feel like crying just talking about this fucking stupid joke, man. But it's so fucking funny. Uh oh. <laughs> he was so high. I need you guys to know, my father is old school conservative. You understand? My father is old school military like conservative. The day that, like, when he breaks character like this, it makes my heart explode. I want you guys to know, like, when your parents break character, you know what it's like. You know how amazing it can be. And one of my favorite moments in life was last year, or two years ago now, when my father retired, uh, we threw him a retirement party. And when we threw him a retirement party, he asked us, like, you know, for little gifts. And I asked him, what do you want? And he goes, look, I want a cell phone. And I go, why do you want a cell phone? And he goes, because everybody have one, and I don't know how to use, I want to learn. I go, that's nice. And then he goes, remember the time you showed me? I like it. You know what my dad was talking about? He's talking about a time that I showed him that you could watch porn on a phone. <laughs> I showed my 65 year old dad that you can watch porn on a phone and it blew his fucking mind. Man. We were at my parents' cabin up north and we were watching baseball on a cell phone and my dad doesn't understand how it works. And he, he sees us watching baseball and he's just like making barbecue and he goes, hey, what are you doing? 
We go, Daddy, we're watching baseball. And he goes, you can do that? We go, yeah, I mean, you can watch live TV right now. And he goes, that's crazy. And my cousin just goes, yeah, you can watch anything you want. <laughs> he goes, anything? And my cousin goes, yeah, anything. He goes, anything? And my cousin goes, yeah, you can watch the live sex, man. It's crazy. He goes, no. <laughs> We go, yeah, and I swear to God, it was the first time I ever seen a break character. And if you don't know what I mean by break character, like, usually your mother is your mother, but you ever been in a mall, and your mom just nudges you and goes, you see that lady Bernadette? She's a fucking bitch. You're like, oh! oh holy shit, mom! I didn't know we were friends like that. It's one of those things. My dad, I swear to God, I never thought he would have done this shit. We go, daddy, you can watch me have sex right now. I swear to God, he goes, I have sex. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, show me, let me see. <laughs> He starts walking up to us, and we go, what do you want to see? He goes, I don't know. We go, daddy, you can choose whatever. He goes, I don't know, let me see sexy lady. We go, yeah, of course you want to see a sexy lady. Well, what kind? Black, Chinese, white. He goes, oh, I don't know, I want the big boobie. We start laughing, okay, big boobie, sure, sure. And then we go, what about the guy? What do you want to see in the guy? Black, white, Chinese. And I swear to God, he's so immigrant. He goes, I don't know, I don't know. We go, choose. He goes, huh. Oh. Okay, let me see the black guy. <laughs> we start laughing in his face, and he starts going, Hey, why are you guys laughing? Why are you guys laughing? This is gay? We go, no, this is not gay. It's got nothing to do with gay. He goes, what are you laughing then? We go, man, why didn't you choose the black guy? I swear to God, he leans in. He goes, because everybody always talk, 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 but I never see. <laughs> in my heart, I was like, oh, you don't want to see a black guy. You want to see the black dude. <laughs> Dude, we showed him the funniest, longest thing before. We showed him a guy named Mandingo, and it blew his fucking mind, man. Man, dude, we all know who he is. Like, super famous porn star, like, ginormous dick. And as soon as we showed it to my dad, you need to know he's an old school immigrant. He didn't even believe it. We showed it to him, and he went, no, 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 this is not real. And we go, daddy, that's real, and it's not even hard yet. And I swear to God, he goes, holy shit. This guy have the best job. We go, yeah, he does have the best job. And I need you to know, my dad is an old school union guy. And as soon as he sees, and he goes, this guy have the best job. And he looks nice, he goes, hey, you think he have benefits or no? <laughs> yeah, look at the dick, that's the fucking benefit, man. I want you to know, my dad is cool with it. He's laughing with us, he thinks it's hilarious. He's watching this guy's giant dick, he thinks it's hilarious. The minute the blowjob is over, the lady hops on, and we've all watched the hardcore porn, you know what's coming next. She's gonna act like it's too big, like she can't enjoy it. And my dad doesn't understand that it's all an act. It's all, you know, it's a show, man. And he, he's watching it, and the lady's going, oh, oh. and my dad's going, hey, 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 she's yelling. She don't like it. She don't like it. It's too big. I hurt her. She don't like it. She don't like it. I don't want to see this. And I swear to God, he slaps the phone down and goes, I don't want to see this. Tell me the truth. She going to be okay. <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, I don't know, I never made it to the end. Who the fuck makes it to the end? You make it halfway, you're like, I'm done. The end. One of my favorite moments in life is that moment, okay? When I thought, when I, that happened, I was like, this is gonna be the greatest fucking joke in the world. I want you to know, it wasn't even done then. Like two months later, we're sitting at my brother's house. My, bro my brother has like a little couch area in front of his TV that kind of wraps in this kitchen behind us, okay? So I need you to know, my dad's watching TV all by himself, and this Tim Hortons commercial comes on, and the lady in the Tim Hortons commercial looks just like the lady from the porno. And in front of everybody, my dad goes, Mikey, look! She's okay! She's okay! <laughs> Thanks, man. You guys have been unbelievable, man. I'm in my arena. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Look, we You see why I flew in for Toronto, right? And that's awesome. Uh, Rita the Human on Instagram, that's how you find him. Also, again, thank you to Crop King Seeds for making that happen. So, uh, CropKingSeeds.com. And uh, all of you for coming out here today, I appreciate that. I got some notes, I got some housekeeping stuff to kind of wrap things up here to fill you all in on. I appreciate it. Some thank yous, some appreciative uh, 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 kind words, I guess, when it gets down to it. Like, a lot of you supported what I do through this season, and if it wasn't for a lot of you, I wouldn't have been able to do what I do. So thank you to you, appreciate that. Also, everybody who watches from all around, wherever you watch from, there would be no point doing this if nobody saw it. So thank you very much as well, too. Also gotta make sure that uh, you go ahead and support all the Bud broadcasters who do what they do, including all the folks from Hot TV. I see Jared and Carly in the place to be as well, too, what's going on. I know a lot of folks like Freddie Pritchard, the Weed King, Swammy, who saw it coming. What's going on? Free the weed, Freddie. 
We've got folks like Dog of the Hut, Pedro and Dizzy, all the folks on there, D420K, Johnny B, Koala Puffs, and Trippy T Trees, both were part of the show this season. So make sure you support all the Canada content creators because that's what we do. So thank you very much for all that. Uh, also, while I'm thanking people, uh, Rob and Cindy, could you stand up for a second, please? These two in the front here. Round of applause for Rob and Cindy. Can you stand up for a second, please? So, uh, Cindy is our hostess, aka the guest whisperer, for those who don't know. She's done a fantastic job welcoming all our guests, making sure everybody is also in position on time. Uh, she's also going to make sure everybody's happy and feeling good, so thank you for all you do, Cindy. Rob is also the guy in the chat room for who uh, is in there giving all sorts of information and education, keeping people up to what's going on there and monitoring all that. You've been doing it all season. That's a lot of work. So, so Rob, look over there and say hi and say thank you as well, too. So thank you very much to both of you. Uh, speaking of people to thank, Puffa. The big Puffa. Yeah, my friend. What's going on? Turn around. Let me see the jersey. On purpose. Well, also to that effect, so we are. I do have the Shaw subscription here. We got the airplane. We got all the TV going to go in the green room. We got another one we can wheel in the hall. I know the game starts at six, and some of you going to try and watch that. We're going to try and stream that up next. So uh, I like you, but I hope you lose right now. <laughs> uh, that would be great. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, holding it down for damn time as well too. Uh, being a dope music director and a good bud. Uh, you've got a lot of, uh, you always had to hear in the streets and expose me to some people and some things I wouldn't have had and been, you know, just helpful and I, I love your hustle and I uh, appreciate you being around, so thank you very much. The Big Puffa. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of hosts, we're just make sure you tune in to Fridays, two on Fridays at takeoutradio.com. Me and DJ Slippy over here holds it down tomorrow. We've got um, DJ Doberman and... Rat, a cat named Ratchy, so make sure you tune in SaveOutRadio.com, behind the scenes over there. You know, you got to get the housekeeping in as well, too. Also, I was also wanted to uh, call out Stormy. Stormy Ent at this point as well, too, here. You remember Dreadlock Girl, season one? We all know her. She got stuck in, uh, in Quitlam, and with the Instagram being down, couldn't get the communication down, but Instagram's back up. Yeah, so unfortunately, she can't be here, but she is watching. So, Stormy, thank you very much for everything you did, Norm, helping get the season one off the ground. You're the best. Appreciate you. You're awesome. Also, Jenny. Stand up for season two. The girl in yellow as well, too. The Canagar queen. Uh, Loud Odeo. She sent me a Canagar to say, hey, I want you to smoke this and try this. And I thought it was kind of ballsy. And I was like, okay, well, sure. Let's see what you got. And they were good. And next thing you know, she was on season two. Hold the down with me. So thank you very much for everything you did. Um, keep killing worldwide, by the way, as well, too. Follow Smiling Buddha until Instagram shuts that down, and then they'll come up with a new one. You know, you'll find it. They're up there. Canada guards are awesome. Yes, we're going to smoke that in a minute. Uh, also, huge thank you goes to Andrew and Cannabis Life Network for everything that they do. Uh, connected partway through season two while I was doing everything by myself still at Pod TV. Uh, you, you helped me grow and my brand and uh, the show to make it just so much better. Um, also, I talk my joint out, you know, like that's just a sin. I can't, I'll take a pause to relate that. Because let's face it. Um, let me see what else. Sorry, a little few things to say here. I don't, I mean, it's been a massive part of the success and it really wouldn't have been here and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your help. So thank you very much everybody involved with that. Appreciate you being here. And uh, yeah, um, also, <laughs> you guys put up a lot of my shit. And you wouldn't believe how much Andrew jumps around in the back there, so it's a lot of work. So again, all the cast and crew who always does everything we do, the people who do the montages, everything, everybody who's coming on board. Just, there's so much more to come, it's gonna be so dope. Um, and the best is yet to come. Hey, what's up brother? I see you sneaking in the last minute, what's going on? People are just literally sliding in. Um, anyway, why the trip down memory lane? I gotta say this, some of you may know, some of you don't, you might have figured it out. This is not only the season four finale, but this is the series finale of Expert Joints Live. What? Yeah. Um, this is the last episode. At least for a while, anyway. Um, after 180 episodes of a show that I started just because I didn't have a video this week, it was literally what it was. I didn't have a video. I just started to do the show for the sake of I needed some content. And it's been a four year full time job that I put like 40 hours a week into has completely taken over. And I've got so much more stuff creatively that I want to do. And like, I've literally done over 250 episodes by the time of pot TV shows, co-hosts, other specials, the Friday show, everything we do, talk to more than a thousand guests and I could keep doing it. 
but I kind of want to do some more stuff too. And to be able to do the content that I want to do and have the time to focus on that, I need to stop doing this for a while. And it's not to say that I'm not going to do some live specials and stuff, or I might not even bring the talk show format again at some point back, but I'm basically doing the job of four people at once. And it's like, great, I enjoy it, but it's all I get to really do. So it's just time for something new. So I appreciate you guys who all came through here to do that, to celebrate this in a nice way to break it down. So thank you guys for everything. somewhere in the fall, uh, something a little different. It'll be cool though still. Also a bunch of new content to continue to come out as well too. Lots of events, lots of coverage, actually more stuff is actually the way it's going to work out here as well too. So that's going to be really fun. So I'm really excited about that. So make sure that you follow on Expert Joints everywhere. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up while we're doing the homework for those people watching on YouTube. And if any of you still got those joints left, y'all want to light those back up? So at the end of the show, of every episode, I said three words. Some of you know them, and some of you don't. So it will be the last time for at least a little while. Would you join me, please? Andrew, if you're ready, hit the music. On three, okay, one? Oh, oh, we got it, okay, on three, I need you to repeat after me, on three. One, oh, shit, ah, 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 that's why. Sorry. On three, one, two, three. Andrew! Thanks, y'all. Now, everybody up here, let's go, let's go, let's go. Everybody up here, let's go. Everybody.